In these problems, we are being given one trigonometric value, in this case the cosine of theta equals this 4 times the square root of 7 over 11. And we're being asked to find a couple of other trigonometric values, the sine of theta and the tangent of theta. They've also given us one other little piece of information that seems a little confusing at first. How do we go about this? We've only got the cosine. How do we find both the sine and the tangent from that? Well, you actually need um, this little formula, which says that the cosine squared of theta plus the sine squared of theta equals 1. Where does that come from? Well, if you think about the unit circle, right, this is a circle with radius 1. If we've got a point, let's say right there, there's the radius out to that point from the center. The x value would be the cosine, that's the length of this side right here of the triangle, and the y value would be the sine, that's the length of this side. And if you think about it, this is a right triangle. So the cosine squared plus the sine squared is going to equal the square root of, of this side here, which would be 1, because this is a unit circle. So it actually comes from the Pythagorean theorem. Well, anyway, let's use this to figure this out. Um, this other piece of information, the cosecant of theta is greater than 0. Well, the cosecant is 1 over the sine. And if it's positive, well, the sine is going to be positive 2. So what that means is that since we're going to be taking a square root at some point in these calculations, we can ignore the negative value uh, that we might get with a square root and just take the positive one. Let's go ahead and try this. We're going to plug this value in for cosine. So that would be 4 times the square root of 7 over 11, quantity squared, plus sine squared, theta, equals 1. This is 16 times 7 over 121, plus sine squared theta equals 1. And what is that? 112 over 121 plus sine squared theta equals 1. If we subtract 112 over 121 from both sides, we would get sine squared theta equals 1 minus 112 over 121. And let's see, 121 over 121 minus 112. I think that's actually just 9 over 121. Yeah, so we would get sine squared theta equals 9 over 121. And then we'll go ahead and take the square root of both sides. And we're going to just take the positive value here, as we mentioned before, and we get sine of theta equals 3 over 11. So we found our sine. The other value we were supposed to get is the tangent. And remember, the tangent is the sine over the cosine. So we can set that up here. We have 3 over 11 over 4 times the square root of 7 over 11. And one way to think about this is multiplying by 11 over 11 to get rid of the denominator of the fraction within the fraction. So this would come out to be 3 over 4 times the square root of 7. And then we might want to get the radical out of the denominator here. We could multiply by square root of 7 over square root of 7. And we would get 3 times the square root of 7 over 4 times 7 would be 28. And that would be our tangent value. So we found the sine and the tangent there. Let's try another one. This one says the sine is 3 fourths, the secant is greater than 0. And remember, the secant is 1 over the cosine. So what's that telling you is, is the cosine is going to be positive as well. And we want to find the cosine and the tangent here. So again, we'll set this up. The cosine squared of theta plus the sine squared of theta, and that's going to be 3 fourths squared, equals 1. While 3 fourths squared is 9 sixteenths. And so we've got cosine squared theta equals 1. We subtract 9 sixteenths from both sides. We get cosine squared of theta equals 1 minus 9 sixteenths. And let's see, 16 sixteenths minus 9 sixteenths. That's going to give us 7 sixteenths. So cosine squared of theta equals 7 sixteenths. And square root of both sides. We're going to get cosine of theta equals square root of 7 over 4. All right, so we've got our cosine. Now to find the tangent, we're going to put the, the sine over the cosine. Our sine is 3 fourths, and our cosine is square root of 7 over 4. We'll multiply by 4 over 4 to get rid of these denominators here. So we get 3 over square root of 7, 
and we'll take the radical out of the denominator by multiplying by square root of 7 over 7, and we get 3 times the square root of 7 over 7 for our tangent. All right, just one more here. Now this one looks tricky, but it might be easier than it seems. This one says, given the tangent of theta is 1 over the square root of 3, and the secant is positive, is greater than 0. Remember, the secant is 1 over the cosine. So cosines are going to be positive. And then if the tangent is positive and the cosine is positive, the sine has to be positive too, because the tangent is the sine over the cosine. So it can't be negative and make the tangent positive if the cosine is positive. We want to find the sine and the cosine. And at first, this seems like it would be impossible, because there are a lot of things that the sine and the cosine could be and still evaluate to a tangent of 1 over the square root of 3. But if we look at the answer choices here, it becomes pretty simple. I mentioned that the cosine is positive, so therefore the sine has to be positive to give a, a positive tangent. And if you look at the choices here, we've got a positive and a negative, a negative and a positive, a positive and a positive, and a positive and a negative. So the only one that would meet that criteria would be C. And if you um, make the ratio here 1 half over square root of 3 over 2, you find out that, yes, it does give a tangent of 1 over the square root of 3. So that's a little bit of work with finding trigonometric values given some other trigonometric value.